So this video is about the discriminant formula, and the discriminant formula comes from the quadratic formula, which is given to you on your reference sheet. So you don't really need to memorize it, you just need to know where to find it. So in the quadratic formula, our discriminant formula is what's underneath the radical, this b squared minus 4ac. So that's known as our discriminant. So what is it that our discriminant does? What do we use it for? Our discriminant is used to describe the type of roots for a quadratic equation or to determine how many roots there are. The discriminant will only describe the roots or tell you the number of roots. It will not tell you the roots themselves. You would have to solve the quadratic equation in order to do that, either by factoring or using the quadratic formula. So once again, the discriminant will describe the roots or tell us how many roots there are for a quadratic equation. So let's take a look at an example. Find the discriminant. 4x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. So remember, our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And remember, in a quadratic equation, a, b, c, it goes in the order that you see it there. So b is negative 2, 4 is a, and 5 is C. So all I did was substitute in. Now I'm going to go to my calculator and type this in. So let me move this so you can see. So on my home screen, negative 2 squared minus 4 times 4 times 5. And my discriminant is going to give me negative 76. So now that I found the discriminant, the question is, what does that tell me about the roots? So, because this discriminant is a negative number, negative 76, that means my roots are going to be imaginary. Because if you think back to where the discriminant is in the quadratic formula, it's under the radical. And we know whenever we get a negative under the radical, it's imaginary or complex. So when we have a negative, that means we're going to have two imaginary or complex roots or solutions. And remember, roots is the same thing as solutions. So that's if it's negative. If you find the discriminant and the discriminant is positive, it means that you will have two real roots. And if you find the discriminant and it's equal to zero, it means you will have one distinct real root. So these are three cases. Negative means it's imaginary and there's two of them. Positive means it's real and there's two of them. Or zero means that there's one distinct real root. So let's take a look at their graphs. So I have three examples here for you. So let's start with our positive. x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So first let's just show that it's definitely a positive number. b would be negative 2, a would be 1, and c would be negative 8. So if we type that in our calculator we're going to get 36. So there's our positive number. But if we take a look at this equation, this is a factorable quadratic. If I wanted to factor this, I would get x and x, a minus, and a plus, and I'm looking for the factors of 8, so I have 4 and 2. And now if I t off, I'm going to get x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. So those are our solutions to the quadratic equation. And you should remember that solutions are the same thing as x-intercepts. So I have negative 2 and I have 4. So my graph will look 
like this. So I have two real solutions. So I have two x-intercepts here and here. Two real solutions means two x-intercepts. And that's when we have a positive discriminant. So let's look at our next case. If I have a negative discriminant. So if I have the example x squared plus 9 equals 0, there's no b value. It's 0 because there's no x. Minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 9. If you type this into your calculator, you will get negative 36. So I have a negative discriminant, which we said means there are two imaginary or complex roots. So if we look at our equation, x squared plus 9 equals 0, we can't factor that. Two terms, no GCF, can't use difference of perfect squares because it's a plus sign, and they're not perfect cubes. So if I were to sketch this and I go to my calculator, I'll just show you what it looks like. I have x squared plus 9. So here's my graph. It does not cross the x-axis. It has no x-intercepts. Okay, there are no x-intercepts because we had two imaginary roots. So if I have an imaginary root, it's not going to touch the x-axis. And now let's take a look at our last case. b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So when we get 0 for our discriminant, we said that that will give us one distinct real root. So let's take a look at this. b squared, so I have negative 6 squared minus 4 times a is 1 and c is 9. When we type that in our calculator, we'll get 0. And if we look at our equation, x squared minus 6x plus 9, this is factorable. I get x and x. I get two negatives. And they're both going to be x minus 3. So if you remember, when we have x minus 3 times x minus 3, we can really write this as x minus 3 squared. So I only have one distinct or one different x value. It's x equals 3 and x equals 3, but they're the same. So if I graph this, if you remember back to our polynomials unit, that exponent of 2 meant it was a multiplicity of 2, so it had a bounce. So now we know that that means there's a discriminant of 0, and I only have one x-intercept. So these are your three cases for the discriminant. If it's positive, we'll have two real roots and two x-intercepts. If it's negative, we'll have two imaginary or complex roots and no x-intercepts. Or if the discriminant equals 0, you'll have one real distinct root, and it will have one x-intercept.